it's your crazy fangirl Shami. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we're going to be doing a review for Black Widow. It's been a long time coming guys and also this is technically the first proper review on this channel for 2021. We didn't do any last year so we're getting back into it this year. Obviously I do want to do a video still on Zack Snyder's Justice League um, but it'll be more about like how much I enjoyed it how much I loved it and that'll be done in the next couple of weeks when I get time but I really want to do that video but anyway we're going to talk about Black Widow today and whoa, this movie was great I did not expect it to be as good as, as it was um, it really blew it like all my expectations out of the park it was obviously placed after Civil War and it was like we were sort of going um, on a journey with Natasha and getting to see sort of like all these different places and like learning about the story and her past as she was going back through it. So I sort of love that instead of like too many flashbacks and stuff. Obviously we had that amazing opening scene for the film which was great obviously including David Harbour, Rachel Weiss, I think that's how you say her name and then obviously the kid actors amazing that whole like escape scene and then just like on the plane leaving and then just yeah that was like I feel like part where they landed the plane and then Natasha is protecting Yelena is like a big big um setup for this entire film but also it just like sets like the tone of it and how quickly things change and how quickly the kids are sort of taken up and they're going to the red room it's so heartbreaking and I loved how, again, brutally honest this movie was with us. This film also has a lot of vibes from like Mission Impossible, James Bond era, and I loved it so much, especially when they were like um, on the run in Budapest. I was like, oh my god, this is like I'm watching a James Bond film, the music, everything was just amazing, and I was just like, I love it. I love this film, and I want more of it. <laughs> in a way, it connects a lot of real world problems in today's society but also the problems that we as women have in in the real world and I've seen a lot of criticism about this film I've seen it from men women and just the differences that are there in the criticism and review of this movie and I do want to actually jump into that right now because we will be talking about the characters later I love how there's a lot of different themes in this movie especially the idea of choice and in today's world with women we do thankfully have a lot of choice but we are seen as disposable and in this film it just shows that so beautifully and it connects to the idea especially with the red room especially with Drakov's plans etc it's shown how disposable we are but also connects to the idea of human trafficking and how women are abducted in different countries etc and taken advantage of and used for their just whatever purpose that they needed for and then thrown away and that was an example in this film I don't know the soldier's name but it was a black widow and she chased after Yelena and Natasha in um Budapest <laughs> and then she was killed because she was the he didn't Dracov didn't need her anymore and disposed of her eliminated her and that was just a such a brutal example and I I loved it because it was like so truthful and I I felt it so hard so well done and we will talk about that more throughout the rest of this review but let's jump into the characters right now because I do want to talk about my favorite character of this film and I think many even men and women loved this character Yelena Florence Power I think that's how you say your name you guys can correct me on that but she was incredible I honestly wasn't sure about her character I was like I'm not sure how this is gonna go but I <laughs> honestly fell in love with her so quickly but just this lovable but also just this like oh there's just so many things to her that I loved about her but let's get into the fact that just such great range for this character and I that's why I was scared like with you know introducing more women into the films and stuff that they wouldn't be well drawn out wouldn't be well written but she was so good and we will talk about Natasha and even um, Melina later because they were so such amazing women in this film but anyway um Yelena so just uh, I don't know I related to her so much because I love my family and you guys know that like just such a big part of my life is my family and the idea of Yelena holding on to this idea of family even though it wasn't real and maybe deep down she knew it she held on to that maybe as sort of like to keep herself sort of sane or keep her keep that love alive inside of her she kept that memory and all those memories that she had of growing up with Melina and 
uh, what's his name? Alexei, um, alive. And this is the same with Natasha, but I will talk about Natasha later. Just, she has such a hard front and just like has all these walls build up, no emotion whatsoever, but then you get to the core of it and she's this sweet young woman. All she wants is her family, all she wants is her sister, Natasha, and just wants to have that love in her life and sort of like that partnership and bond with them still. And it's such a beautiful thing and yeah, that's why I just love Yelena so much. And also, she was just hilarious and especially because um, Florence and Scarlett had such great chemistry as sisters. It reminded me so much of me and my sister, so my sister as Natasha in the sense and me as Yelena, so it's just like we're like back and forth bickering. All those scenes just reminded me so much of me and my sister and I loved it and it made me just smile so many times and I was like, oh yeah, we bicker like that. Oh yeah, we talk like that. Yeah, just stuff like that. It made me so happy that I could relate to these women and just like the relationships I have in my life with like just seeing it on screen was pretty awesome and I loved that in this movie. I also lo- <laughs> I also love the fact that she panics her way through being like a black widow. It's just like I love the prison scene. That just made me laugh so hard. Especially because like she's struggling really hard to keep this ele- helicopter afloat and like Natasha's like what the hell are you doing? And she's like it's okay. Everything's fine. We're doing a good job. Everything's perfectly okay. And then she's such a badass obviously while setting off that rocket. But still she's just hilarious. Thing. And even the, the whole pose thing, I know that was like just like this running joke of obviously like what Natasha has done throughout previous films, but to see Yelena do that and then she poses and she's like, oh no. And even someone on Twi- um, Tumblr was like, when you try to do something your sibling does and it's not as cool. And I was like, yeah, that's, I've had that feeling so many times. So I just loved it. And she's just so good. So I'm so glad already it's been confirmed that she is going to be in the Marvel Universe in the future, which we'll talk about later. But I'm excited and I'm so glad that we're going to get to see more of her. And I'm excited for the future for her in the Marvel Universe because she's amazing. Okay, so Alexei shots. Shotstakov? Sorry, it's very hard to speak the names. Um, but... He, <laughs> David Harbour, I mean, you guys know this. If you're on my Tumblr, you'll know this. I love David Harbour. He's so good in Stranger Things. And he also, very much like Pedro Pascal, likes to play father figures. So, yeah, I don't know why. But he is such a great actor. And he was great, again, in Stranger Things. But in this, it was so different to a lot of roles he's ever played. He's definitely played a lot of heroes, anti-heroes and stuff. But this was a mixture. He was definitely not one of the, like, the good guys, but also he had a lot of heart to him, and there was a lot of tragedy. It reminded me a lot of, I think it's, like, 60s and 80s, like, TV shows of, like, the war, and there's, like, that comedy that soldiers have, and there's, like, that tragedy, and just all that stuff reminded me so much of that, and I loved that. He was very patriotic, which was very interesting. It it just shows, like, how much he cared about his role working for the Red Room and doing the, the fight, like, doing the good in, like, for his, like, people and for his country and for his organization. He wanted to do them proud and obviously just do well. And that's why, you know, he's all hung up on those tragedies and, like, how he versed Captain America and how he versed all these different heroes. And it was just interesting to see his take on such a character that's so, yeah, tragic. (laughs) But again, he was great as comic relief. We did need those moments in this film because this film is so brutal and honest. And yeah, and also, I was going to say, the period joke, I remember that this is where I'm going to bring it up, the period joke. So um, a lot of people would probably agree with me when we heard it, we were like, oh no, not this. But the response to it is what makes it work. So obviously Yelena responds with how the women were forced to have a hysterectomy. Let me get the right thing because I don't want to say it wrong. Oh, hysterectomies. That's why. I just wanted to say it because I have a few Tumblr posts that I want to talk about because a lot of women have been talking about this and I totally agree with what they say and I feel like there needs to be, they need to be involved in this review as well because they're so good. Um, But just the clapback was just so good from Yelena and just saying, you know, like, we weren't given a choice. And just even throughout the film, you, again, the idea of choice, not being able to have children, not being able to have a mind of their own, not being able to choose what they want to do in life. And there's so many moments where 
like these women aren't allowed to have a choice over their bodies over their actions it's just so heartbreaking like we'll connect with this because this is this is what we've gone through a lot of women go through this and that's why with some men men are like oh i can't relate to this this isn't a good movie i don't understand like the quiet moments of this film i don't understand the importance of bringing this up that's because they've never had to make a choice like that or had that choice taken away from them and that's why this film is so good because it's Again, it's like, it's not like straying away from the ideas of choice and just all these topics surrounding women that usually are only surface level in many films. And that's why for a Marvel film, I was so shocked by how honest it was. I was like, damn, they're actually going hard on this. And I love that that was this film. Like, it was brutally honest. And I love that because we need that, in, especially in... A film like this about Natasha Romanoff in being abducted by the Red Room <laughs> or being sold to the Red Room and yeah it's just like that it's just it's a very interesting concept and that's why it needs to be done well and this movie did it really well and that's why I'm very happy with how it went um but going to sort of like the Tumblr post that I wanted to talk about Omnipresent Lemon <laughs> um wrote like a really good like bit, few like paragraphs about it so I will read it because it's very important I cannot tell you how much I loved having Natasha and Yelena half jerk half berate Alexi about the hy- hysterectomy sorry my apologies it was something that was brought up in Age of Ultron to be like "Ooh, see how monstrous monstrous Natasha is she can't even have kids but Black Widow didn't do that it brought it up in a way that was so casual that you got the full effect of just how violating this was for girls in the red room it didn't make them better agents it didn't make them efficient killers it was a brutalization and violation of their bodies plain and simple just one long line of horrors and they got to joke about it sure but because it was their plan to make fun of and show Alexi that the Red Room wasn't just strength and honor. The anger was there, and it was completely justified. I'm so glad that they included this scene. And again, this scene is so important, especially because no one was laughing at the joke. I was worried that, you know, Natasha would laugh about it or Yelena would laugh about it, but both women were mad and pure rage and I love that instead of making it into a joke it was a clap back and it was a serious response and that's why I was like oh thank the lord (laughs) it's done very well and just you need like that's the thing like people will be like oh why is that there it's too serious it's too serious it needs to be there because it's serious because this choice has been taken from them and just again like I can't stress enough how important this is in terms of like touching on this topic about like women not having a choice I mean yes there are topics about men not having a choice but in the long run women have not been given a choice most of the time so it was very important to look into that and see that it was well done now Melina Vostokov uh Rachel Weiss amazing like I also was like oh my god there's all these new characters but how are we all gonna get like equal time but it was so well done that everybody got their chance in the spotlight and to reveal like sort of like what was going on with themselves and I have to say Melina was also such a brutal shock to the face because you know she also was a woman that didn't have choice she was grown up in this in the red room she also grew up there and she was you know she became Uh, sort of a machine in a way and it was very interesting to see that um and how she also talked about you know being a a mouse in a cage and being brought up as a mouse in a cage I think it was I can't remember the exact like script line but it was so well done and you know like as we see her talking about it it's very brutal also very honest and just very how's the thing I, I don't know the word, there's a word for it, but um, just seeing her so, um, well, I guess not emotional about the actions that she's doing, especially when the whole pig scene, I was just like, I couldn't look at the screen because I was like, oh my god, my heart is breaking because I love animals, so I was like, no, please get that away from me. But it was so well done because it just shows how much she's just been inducted into this life of being a part of the red room and working for them and obviously doing their bidding and again as she said like we were following orders and very much like a a winter soldier stuff not really but i will talk about that later and yeah she's so 
involved in this world of the Red Room and working for them that she didn't care about who this was, like, this formula was tested on, especially because, obviously, like, the mind control stuff. It was, like, she didn't realize who it was tested on until she was, like, Yelena and, you know, like, all these other women, young girls. And the fact that only when Yelena was, like, it was tested on me and it, the only reason she got out was because she got lucky, she was, like oh god, like, I hurt someone I care about, and she was shocked by her actions, and it was just, yeah, heartbreaking to see that, and, oh yeah, that's, that's the word, I just looked at my notes, and I remember, she's a very immune to emotion, so she doesn't show a lot of it, especially at the table when she's experimenting with the pigs, um, and then she gets up, speaks to Natasha, and you can see how much it affects her, like, how Natasha was talking about her life as well in the Red Room, and how she wishes she had a choice, but also telling um, Melina, that you didn't have a choice. You didn't know that you could do that, but now you do. And then in that moment, she tells them, like, I, I did tell them that you were here. And she didn't need to do that. She could have just let it go. She could have still worked for the Red Room. Instead, she decided to make the good choice and the better choice and help trying to stop Drakov and the Red Room from continuing their sort of purge of like destruction on women and even the rest of the world and that's such a beautiful sort of turn for the character and we see that throughout the rest of Act 3 and I loved that like she was such a great character and I do hope we see her again as well just like Yelena, Alexei and <laughs> Melina going on just like adventures trying to like keep the world safe and try to do their best in the world. That would be very interesting. Now, Drakov, he was a great villain because he's no super villain. He's no guy with superpowers. He's no one with, like, a super big agenda. All he does is thrive off the idea of having this army of women, like, not only protecting him, but also doing his bidding across the globe. And he's obsessed with creating this purpose for these women and taking the credit for all sort of like their success, saying it was all him. It was always him. And he's very much like a puppet master. And I love that, again, it wasn't like this super big villain. And we will talk about Taskmaster, but just how much he was obsessed with control to the point where he put a chip in his own daughter's head instead of either laying her to rest and letting her be at peace or even trying to get her fixed and like obviously you know like back to as a normal human being instead took control of her mind and made her into something that she never wanted to be and just it was so messed up and so sad and heartbreaking and just it's like, he's such a disgusting pig. But it's an example of the men in this world who want to take advantage of these women and use them for their benefit. Like, there's so many examples of this. There's a lot of men who are like that in real life. And just seeing that in him, it was just disgusting. But also, it was so well done. I'm glad that we got that sort of honest... Uh, representation on screen and especially the line the, oh, the line this one line stuck with me after the film and I had to go back and watch it and see like rewrite the line these girls were trash I recycle the trash and I give them purpose so again he's taking credit for giving them a purpose whatever that is in his mind and just it's oh it's messed up but this is like how a lot of men think in the world and that's why I was like damn this like really hits hard because, you know, a lot of women can relate to a lot of stuff that happened in this film, but we will get more into that throughout the rest of the review. But again, such a great representation in Dracoff, and yeah, I just hope we get this honesty with other superheroes and topics like this in the rest of the MCU. It'll be interesting to see what happens. This is also another good one that I saw as a connection to Dracov um, from Aspiring Spellcaster. Um, <laughs> everything that Natasha and Yelena suffered through happens because they're women. The Red Room doesn't just abduct any children, they abduct little girls. This movie does a great job of showing how men like Dracov do not see women as people and how simply being born a girl puts you in danger. Natasha was just a normal girl. Her mother didn't even abandon her like she believed, but because she was a girl, she caught the attention of Dracov, and as he said, the most expendable resource in the world is little girls. And as heartbreaking as it is, that is the brutal truth and brutal truth of reality, because it's so fucking true. <laughs> so, Taskmaster. So I'm going to say, 
Of course, this is very different to the original Taskmaster that a lot of us were sort of waiting for. Even with me, like, I sort of caught on to the idea very quickly what was going on with Taskmaster, and I was like, hmm, I think that's a woman. <laughs> Even before the whole daughter thing came in, I was like, wait a second. Hmm. And then, <laughs> um, but at the same time, I know that a lot of, uh, and I saw this online, a lot of people were like, why isn't he a man and stuff like that? And why isn't his like backstory there? Um, in all honesty, I really enjoyed this take on Taskmaster. Though it wasn't the real Taskmaster that people know him to be, I still love that this version of Taskmaster was there. Not only as sort of like a trigger towards Natasha and showing her about the faults that she made in her life as like a Black Widow, but also just like an example of Dracov as well, of what he's capable of. Taking advantage of his daughter and making her into a machine and just seeing her at the end where um, Natasha is obviously versing her broke my heart you know she was like numb and saying is he gone and then because you know again like all these women have that subconscious and then you know awakening from it they realize what they've done she comes out of it and she's just like you know it's so sad and heartbreaking and that's why I do love that there was that like relevance towards Black Widow but in a way I also agree with people that I hope that we do get to see the other version of Taskmaster. I understand why they did want to bring Taskmaster because, again, the fighting was incredible. So well done. I loved Taskmaster and terrified me so much. I was just like on edge the whole time whenever she was on screen. It was amazing. But I would like to see the real Taskmaster, especially because and a lot of people were referring to PS4 Spider-Man and I played the remastered on PS5. The Taskmaster in that was amazing and so good. And though... There isn't really a lot of depth to the real comic book character. He still is so cool and interesting. And also, the one thing I didn't like, and a lot of people thought also was bad, just that the use of technology with him. Because he's just able to watch. It's not even, like, technology-wise, and, like, looking at all the different, like, advantage points. It's him just looking and being able to be like, okay, I can fight you. And it's just like, it's crazy. And that's why I was like... Eh, I don't agree with the technology part, but everything else, I was like, that's fine. I'm fine with that. But um, I would like to see another version of Taskmaster. But again, this version was great. And I really enjoyed seeing the sort of backstory we saw to her and the connection that there was to her, Natasha and Dracov. Just that, that little connection. I really enjoyed that. And it would be interesting to see her again, but um, I don't think we will. Just because she will start a new life, I'm guessing. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with her character. But I hope that she starts a new life and she gets to live out the rest of her days in peace. And I know a lot of people were like, but there's no answer to her. There's no answer to the villain. There's no nothing, la 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 la. Not all villains need an elaborate story or answer to them. There's a lot of <laughs> villains that we know to this day that people do enjoy that are just plain evil. And there's no sort of changing them. And um, I think a lot of people wanted an answer to Taskmaster, which is, you know, this version in the Black Widow movie. And I don't necessarily think we need an answer other than the fact that, you know, this was a woman taken advantage of at her lowest point and her choice was taken away. And obviously as a kid, she wouldn't have been able to make a choice. And especially in that vulnerable position of being nearly killed and, you know, most of her face burnt, a lot of physical problems probably I'm guessing and Dracov made that decision for her and I think like if she could have she may have wanted to die because depending on the severity of the injuries which I'm guessing was extremely high but that choice was taken away from her and instead she became a machine and this is the thing this is very much like the Winter Soldier stuff and even with Winter Soldier we don't have a definite answer apart from the brainwashing. But it's very similar to what Bucky went through. Bucky was also taken advantage of in his lowest point, and he was made into this monster. And then Antonia, Dracov's daughter, it's the same exact thing. She was taken advantage of in her lowest point, both Bucky and her, on the verge of death, and made into something that they never wanted to become. And just, it was a very interesting similarity. I did love that. Um, so yeah, it was... It was very full on with her character, but I also loved it and just enjoy, again, the honesty. Brutal honesty. I love it. <laughs> now to Natasha. 
Oh my god. And just, again, I, I completely forgot as well that um, Scarlett was a producer on this film. And I'm, I'm so glad that she also had a part in this film of making it the way it was. Because I, I want to say this. This film, if it was made 10 years ago, would not have been the film that we got to, like, this year. It would have been a sexualized Black Widow with her doing overly sexually things, very sexualized, and just... Ugh, it would have been very different compared to the one that we got this year. So I'm so glad that she had a say. The, and the director, Kate Shortland, were brave enough. And also even Kevin Feige. Because obviously he's the head of the MCU. And he could have also pushed this down if he wanted to. But the fact that they had so much support and believed in this film so much. Like, and even like a lot of people have been saying this. This movie should have come before Captain Marvel. As much as I love that film with its flaws. There were a lot of flaws with it. But I did love it. I think that Black Widow should have become, like, this, like, this should have come before that, because she's the first female Avenger, and we would never got it, which is really tragic, but at the same time, I'm glad that we got this film now, and it's, like, it's cemented into the history of MCU, though it's a lot later entry, it's still such a great film, and I'm so... Glad that we got this reflection of Natasha because it's so beautiful and so well done. And, you know, we saw her in Iron Man. We've seen her in so many other films. But in this film, it's like she's not an entirely different character, but it's sort of a bit of a continuation of what happened with, I guess, Winter Soldier. Like, I love how vulnerable we got her in that film. And then this film, it just continues that as well. And I love that we got to see, again, what I said before, she has this hard front. All this, like, tension and, like, just, no, get the fuck away from me sort of vibe. But then she's such a, like, a loving character who deep down all she wants is a family and to love the people and protect the people who's around her. And, like... Especially that one moment when they're talking about the mother really got me because, again, mothers are the most important part of our lives and I love my mother as well. But just hearing the determination of her real birth mother and how her mother looked for her and risked the reveal of the Red Room, like, like that's where Natasha got, gets her determination from, from her birth mother. And it's just so beautiful. And to see how Natasha sort of takes that on and she's just like on the verge of tears. And even I was when I watched that scene and even talking about it. I don't know. It's just so emotional. Like the, the strength of a mother or even just women in general inspire me so much. I see it all the time and it just makes me so happy. So to see... Like, even that one scene in this film was so beautiful. And I just, like... I don't know, it's very emotional because we don't get scenes like this in the MCU. And just having that made me so happy. And I was like, th th thank the Lord, thank God that we have this scene. It's so beautiful. And I'm not sure if women, other women had this reaction or even men connected to it. But for me, it was just such a beautiful moment and just, I, I absolutely loved it. In a way, the whole thing with Antonia sort of reminded me a lot of the whole thing with Winter Soldier, Captain America Winter Soldier, um, when she's talking with Steve, like, would you trust me to save your life? And just talking about that. And then moving into this film, it was interesting to see, like, how much regret she has for killing Antonia. Like, at first she's like this hard front, she's like, I had to do what was necessary. She was there and I just had to do it. But deep down, it really hurts her because it was just a child. And then when she sees Antonia, it's so... I love like that moment where she reacts and she sees that this is the little girl that she nearly killed and is alive right in front of her. And, and then just seeing her face off with Taskmaster towards the very end of Act 3 was incredible for Natasha. And there's another moment I want to talk about. Um, but seeing how she faces off with Taskmaster and says, I don't want to hurt you. You have this choice. Just fight it. Fight it. And you can do it. And she's like trying to coax her out of this sort of like that mind control. And she risks her life to get Taskmaster out of that mind control. And just, I love just her determination to help another woman get out of that and just give them a choice. That's the thing, give them a choice. And speaking of choice, I love that she was the one to break her nose and get that choice back of fighting back against Draco. Because I know like she was talking to Melina and she was saying like, you know, you have to sever the nerve or like 
yeah, that's the line, sever the nerve. And she was getting Dracov to punch her and stuff, and he wasn't strong enough to do it. It had to be her. I love it. I know people will be like, oh yeah, but that's such like shit build up. Loved it. It's like the best thing. She made the choice, broke her nose, and then like hit him in the face. That's the best. I loved it. This is also something I wanted to add to Natasha's area of the, <laughs> the review, was that, uh, I need to look at their whole name because it's a long name. Scruffy looking pirate captain says, <laughs> not to be one of those people, but now I completely understand why some male reviewers were saying they didn't connect with the quieter uh, character scenes of Black Widow. I've heard guys say they thought those moments fell flat or just didn't impact them. Of course they don't understand the bond of sister, the unspoken understanding women have with each other, even women who've never met before. They don't understand being the most expendable resource in the world. That's the brutal truth as well. Another point about uh, Natasha severing the nerve, obsessed with the moment in Black Widow when Natasha slammed her head into the table to break her own nose so she could neutralize the pheromone mind block and kill Dracov. Real hot girl shit. Literally nothing any male writer or director in the MCU ever scripted for Natasha, including all the poisy, posing, excuse me, poising, um, quipping, seducing, and fighting was more badass, in character, clever or impressive than, I th than that moment. I will be eternally grateful for having one film when Natasha was realized by women filmmakers who understand her rather than men who obsessed with how hot she was, how hot and sad she was. <laughs> that was said by AKA Just Mary. And just again, Tumblr is the best place when you get some of the greatest like people ranting about a film. And that's why I have to include these and obviously giving them credit where they deserve. This movie also made me realize how much I miss Scarlet as Natasha because it's just such a good film. And we've never had just a movie with her. Like we've had these beautiful moments with her throughout other films and some moments really badly written and just totally not Black Widow Natasha. Um, just men, again, obsessed with her, trying to make her just sexy and just... Uh, 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 no. <laughs> but um, just seeing her in this film was so beautiful and seeing how much love she has for the people she cares for and even for <laughs> Rick Mason, um, who, that was a small character, but was very much of, in love with Natasha. And that's why I was like, oh God, please don't give her a love interest. But no, she's just friend zoning him the whole time. And I love that. Just, you know, he's really like, ooh, I really like it. She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like that that pre-credit scene where she's at the end, she's with the jet, and for a second I was like, please do not show a scene of her and Steve coming together to go and save the frenzies. I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no, no, please no, because <laughs> I will cry. And just thankfully, no, but I still was very teary-eyed at the end because oh, just her walking away to save her family and to save the people she loves and cares about it made me so happy and I, I got really teary-eyed and emotional um and just yeah it's such a I really wish that she was still in the MCU but it's the end of her story I just hate what they did to her in Endgame and just like nah, just no <laughs> just I wish they did a better job with her character it was very like they could have done a lot better but at least we did get this film which is something I'm very happy about and just I'm glad that we have this film, because this is one of my favourite movies now from the MCU. Like, I think this is on the same level as my love for, and you guys know I love that film, but Winter Soldier is my favourite MCU film. Probably, yeah, probably Infinity War coming, like, second or third, but now Black Widow is literally the same, like, pillar as um, Winter Soldier, because it's just the same vibe and just so good. I love it. Now, the credits scene. Um... Madam Hydra, Madam, uh, you were supposed to come out ages ago, apparently, so they have planned that for a long time, and obviously that was supposed to connect to Hawkeye, or Hawkeye, sorry, I say Hawkeye, I don't know why, but, um, that was supposed to come out ages ago, so at least it starts that link now, um, but obviously they did introduce her in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I guess they had to change it up a little bit. But it worked because I think her introduction first in Falcon made sense. Because it was like John was there and then it was like she's going after all these different people. Giving them jobs and yeah it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Especially with Madame Hydra. Because it's definitely the flip side of what was happening in the first 
like era of Avengers, like Nick Fury going around inviting people over into the Avengers. So now it's Valentina going around and t- giving people missions and perhaps making them join a group in the future. Maybe. Red Hulk, I would love to see you soon. But, um, yeah. As far- yeah, Ross was in this film. I completely forgot. And he is sick, guys. So it's pivotal in this film that we saw that because I'm guessing we will see very soon the Red Hulk from Ross that has been like building up for a very long time and I do hope we get to see Red Hulk very soon because it's gonna be we've been waiting for that for a while guys from the very beginning (laughs) from like literally the Incredible Hulk film or the Hulk film I can't remember if it's called the Incredible Hulk but the Hulk film we've been waiting since then so I hope we get that soon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> this is Shimey from the future as editor Shimey. Um, I completely forgot to include my score and it definitely is a 9 out of 10 for Black Widow. Again, such an incredible film. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I, again, like I said it in the end of the review, but just while I'm editing, it makes me so bitter, like bittersweet about it because I want a trilogy with Black Widow, but we obviously can't get one. And yeah, this film was so amazing. And if we could have more films like this, like spy, sort of James Bond vibe, Winter Soldier vibe, I would love it. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on Black Widow. Because again, I cannot stop talking about this film, guys. This film really was one of the best well done movies surrounding a fe- like a female superhero character it was so well done and brutally honest and i loved that like just everything about it i loved the actors the cast had such great chemistry everyone in the cast had such great chemistry and it's just ugh. Uh, just yeah like these female superheroes never get the justice they deserve in these films and to have black widow in this film get such a great in a way send off in this film was so good and i hope that you know maybe in 20 years 30 years there's another black widow well i mean i feel like florence is the next black black widow like the main character not um obviously natasha romanoff but as yelena i think she'll do really well as the next black widow but in 50 years maybe when they decide to remake all the mcu I just hope that they give Natasha more films because I feel like we deserve a whole trilogy from Natasha because now I want more, but uh, it's just like, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate, but I'm glad we got this film. Again, like I said, this film should have come out 10 years ago with the rest of the origin films, but I'm glad we got it now. Better late than never. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um, I'm glad this film came out and I'm excited to see the future of the MCU. Obviously yesterday we saw Loki, which was great and it's opened the pathway to chaos. <laughs> so obviously Doctor Strange's going to be fixing all that. But anyway, that's going to be another video I do in the next couple of weeks. But huh, the pathway has been made and to finish this off again, I love Natasha Romanoff. I loved this film. And Scarlet, thank you for being an amazing Black Widow. You were incredible. And I hope we see you again one day. Maybe in a, like a, in a flashback, please. <laughs> That'll be really nice. <laughs> so again, thank you guys so much for watching this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Here's me out. Woo!